<coughs> Good afternoon and thank you for coming to our four o'clock briefing. Before we get started, I'd like to make some brief introductions. With us today is Sheriff John McMahon from Samuel County Sheriff's Department. Chief Sergio Diaz from the Riverside Police Department. Chief David McGard, Irvine Police Department. Chief Charlie Beck, Los Angeles Police Department. U.S. Marshal Dave Singer from the U.S. Marshals. Special Agent in Charge Tim Delaney from the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Assistant Chief. California Department of Fish and Game, and Chief Bill Siegel, California Highway Patrol. If you have any questions regarding individual or specific questions about their individual uh, investigations, please hold those until the question and answer period. And with that, I introduce Sheriff John McMahon. Good afternoon. The events that occurred yesterday in the Big Bear area brought to close an extensive manhunt for murder suspect Christopher Dorner. Our deputies in Big Bear responded to the report of a stolen vehicle with a subject matching the description of Dorner. It was later discovered that he crashed that vehicle and carjacked a vehicle in the Angeles Oaks area. The deputies continued searching that area for the, the new suspect vehicle, the white pickup truck, as well as Dorner. The, the deputies were able to locate the vehicle, crashed, and he, uh, Dorner fled into a vacant cabin. As the deputies were arriving, we believe suspect Dorner began firing and ambushed our deputy sheriffs that were responding. Two of our deputy sheriffs were, were struck by gunfire one of which was severely injured, Deputy Alex Collins. He's at currently at the hospital being treated. He went through a couple of different surgeries. I just spoke to his wife. He's in good spirits and should make a full recovery after a number of additional surgeries. Unfortunately, our other deputy, Detective Jeremiah McKay, was pronounced deceased at 2.24 p.m. yesterday at the hospital. Deputy, Detective McKay is 35 years old and has been a member of our department for 15 years. He's married and has two children, a seven-year-old daughter and a four-month-old son. He's presently assigned to the Ukaipa station, but had also been a detective at the Big Bear station. My sincere condolences go out to the McKay family. This is truly another sad day for law enforcement. Our department is grieving from this event. It's just a terrible deal for all of us. Uh, the folks that are up here with me as well have also been dealing with this suspect's behavior over the last week. Uh, we believe that this investigation is over at this point and we'll just need to move on from here. I will tell you that the, the deputy sheriffs that responded to this active shooting scene yesterday are absolutely true heroes. There were rounds being fired, as you saw in some of the news coverage, it was absolutely incredible. It was like a war zone, and our deputies continued to go in to that area and try to neutralize and stop the threat. The rounds kept coming, but the deputies didn't give up. Our deputy sheriffs are some true heroes. They're highly trained, and, and I will tell you that I'm proud to be a member of this department, and our deputy sheriffs did a great job yesterday. Thank you. Any questions? Chief, are you gonna take questions now? Chief? Yes. Can you can you confirm, obviously, the, the question of the moment, can you confirm that it is Mr. Dorner, his remains that was found in that cabin last night? I cannot absolutely positively confirm it's him. The suspect that we were following and also had stolen the vehicle matched his description. His behavior based on uh, our deputy's interaction with him inside the vacant cabin was consistent with Mr. Dorner's activity prior to, and we're not currently involved in a manhunt any longer. Our coroner's division is working on trying to confirm the identity through forensics, and we should know that at some point here soon. Sheriff, there are lots of questions about how the fire started at the cabin, whether that was on purpose by the sheriff's department to set it ablaze, that was something that happened as a, uh, 
result of the tear gas that was fired in there. Can you explain how that transpired? What happened? I can tell you that it was not on purpose. We did not intentionally burn down that cabin to get Mr. Dorner out. The tear gas canisters that we used, first off, we used a presence when we showed up. Secondly, we used a cold tear gas. Then we used, sec the next tear gas was that that was uh, pyrotechnic. Does generate a lot of heat. Uh, we in introduced those canisters into the residence and a fire erupted. There was, I mean, there was some chatter that was caught, I guess, on the scanners and, and everything about a burner, and I don't know what that is. Can you explain what a burner is? The pyrotechnic type canisters are commonly referred to as burners. Sure. Can you talk about what you've been there the entire time during this time, back close to your command post, and was this particular cabin searched for the extensive search that your deputies and law enforcement were conducting for the past several days? I'm going to ask Deputy Chief Kovinsky, who was heading up the door-to-door -door search in Big Bear, to answer that question for you. Good afternoon. Uh, during the initial phases of, uh, of this investigation on Thursday, after his vehicle was found, after that his uh, Dorner's vehicle was found, we did an extensive search of that area. About 80% of the cabins in that area are part-time cabins. We went to each cabin. If there were no signs of break-in or no open doors, we then noted it and moved on to the next cabin. Any know, other questions? Do you know if any of your deputies yeah. knocked on the door of that cabin or attempted to contact the, the residents inside? All those cabins in that particular area, we sent deputy teams of deputies out to check to see if there was any entry and if we could make contact. Is there anything you can tell us about what happened that morning? I mean, there's lots of questions about whether he was in that condo for days, hours, I mean, do you know that, number one? And what happened to the people that were in there before he stole the first car? I don't believe that there were anybody in there on Thursday. At the start of the investigation, we don't believe that there was anybody in that cabin. That is somebody that either a rental or the owner. Was we, any, uh, you know what some of these things are still preliminary and as the investigation moves forward we'll have more information regarding those Were things found, though, in that cabin with him? as I said some of that information will become available at the conclusion of the investigation we're still I would imagine that it's, it could have been Thursday, but I'm telling you at the time there was nobody renting that cabin. Did you, did you tell individuals? The, the, we did not find any forced entry. Do you believe that he picked that cabin because it was close to, to where the station was, to where the, the press conferences were happening? Do you believe he was planning another attack or the shootout just happened because he got scared? You know, at this point that would be spe speculative and uh, We'll comment on that later as the investigation unfolds. We spoke unfolds. to individuals in that neighborhood who said that no one ever knocked on that door, on their doors. People who live there, uh, that cabin was a rent, a, a vacation rental. The people who were cleaning it to, to rent it out this weekend just surprised Mr. Dorner there. It, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like you guys were there, uh, you know, and, and, and completely cleared that area. I can tell you that the cabin in question had not been rented out since February 6th. And, and as I said, there was an extensive search in that area of the cabins. Okay, thank you. Please understand that there is an ongoing investigation and many of your questions will be answered at a later date. Sure. Uh, We're not gonna be taking any further questions at this point. Please understand that the PIOs will be summarizing statements made by this department during this press conference and we'll, we'll be posting an update to the department website, as well as sending updates via email. I'd like to thank you all for coming to our press conference. Thank you once again. Was there, was there that concludes the press Mr. conference Dorner for to today. Was there, any, Sheriff, was there any offer for Mr. Dorner to surrender? Can anybody speak to 